Hello everyone, this is Paul Harris. I'm a network engineer for CIS at Durham University. Uh, this video is just a quick guide of how to use a new service called Linkit, um, how to basically go on, use the portal to register a device and give that device internet access. So um, on the CIS um, homepage, you can see there, there's uh, this link here, which gets you into um, loads of information about um, IT matters. Uh, on this page, you can see there's a new Linkit page. Now, um, Linkit's new for this year, um, which has mainly come about because in the past, um, the university wireless hasn't been able to support uh, personal printers, uh, games consoles, and smart TVs, things like that, uh, mainly down to the fact that those devices are home-grade devices and weren't capable of connecting to a university wireless system. Over the summer, we've had a massive upgrade to the wireless system, um, which has enabled to use as a, a raft of new features. Um, one of those features uh, we've called Linkit, and we've developed it into the fact that you can now connect those devices to the to a wireless system at the university, so that in you know you can now bring your printer to the university, smart TVs and things like that, and you will be able to connect them to this system, and then you can do things like you know, connect your your normal laptop to your printer uh, via your own sort of personal wireless network and, and such. So on this page, you can see there's loads of information. There's an FAQs link there, um, which will, you know, help you out if you ever get stuck. Um, if you're still having issues, you can still speak to the service desk and they can have, help you out with a, a raft of, um, um, you know, password resets, uh, registered devices and such. Basically, there's eight steps to register the device, as you can see here. Um, the hardest part is probably getting the MAC address of the device. So what we've done is we've had a load of guides added here. Um, so say you've got a Samsung Smart TV, um, you can click on there, and then it will show you the steps needed to go through the menu structure and get the MAC address. Now, um, it might not be called MAC address. It might be called network address. It might be called something else. Um, Different vendors call it different things. Um, these guys will help you find that um, MAC address or network address, and then you can proceed to go to the um, Linkit portal here. Now, once you get to this Linkit portal, um, it's a case of just using your university uh, logon. And then you can log on to the portal. Now, once you get into the portal, there's just a um, small number of things you can actually do. You can create a device or you can manage the devices that you've already got. Um, we've set this up so you can manage up to 10 devices. Um, we think that should be uh, enough in, um, in terms of number of devices that you may have. Um, when you click on create device, you're taken to this page here. And as you can see there, um, MAC address is the first field uh, that comes up. Now you can type this any way you want, um, as in, as long as it's a valid MAC address presented to you, you can type it in. So when you look on the menu structure or you look on the, the packaging for the device that you're trying to connect, the MAC address may be wrote in different ways um, compared to you know each, each, each different manufacturer write it in different ways. This port will accept any way um, it, you know, it's presented. So if I write it like that, that's um, one way of writing it. Um, Type my email address in. Um, the reason you type your email address in there because it will send you a uh, email, and in that email you will have a, a device receipt which includes the password. So you can have your emails with a um, password, and you can save that and then use it as reference in the future. Call it a device name, so I'm going to call it a printer. Um, that you can basically type in whatever you want. That is just for your own reference to say that that device up there is your printer. Um, uh, take the terms of use. Now, if you want to see the terms of use, you can click on the little link at the end there. It'll take you through to the terms of use page. When you click create, we'll go to a little summary page. Now, this summary page just sort of mentions how long the account lasts for. All accounts last for a year from start. From start. Um, now, in the background, you've had an email sent to you with that password receipt on. Um, what you can do as well, if you want to see that password straight away, you can click down here, click print display uh, password, 
Um, what will happen then is you'll get a pop-up on the screen um, with the receipt on, and that will list the, um, the device that you've just registered, but it will show you the Wi-Fi password. Now, what happens is that Wi-Fi password you get is unique to that device. So each device that you register will get a unique password. Um, so the best thing to do is um, use your emails to keep a record of all those devices and passwords. Um, if you if you want, you can uh, go back into this portal at another time. Say you've forgotten the password. You can click on Manage Devices, click on the device that you've forgotten the password for. Or it's not working, say. You can click Edit. And then when that loads, you can see here, you can click generate new device password, click update device. And then what will happen is you'll get another email with the updated password on. And then if you want to, again, you can display it on the screen. So just go through that again. So if we go to create device, um, if we go to say, um, type in the MAC address in, in, in a different way. So I'm just gonna type it in this way without putting any dashes in. And then uh, put my email address again. Device name, I'm going to call this a laptop. Accept the terms and conditions and click create. <laughs> again, in the background, email has gone through the password on for that device. Now, one thing that um, I'd like to mention is um, what we are recommending you do is if you've got a laptop um, or your phone, leave those devices connected to DU student. Um, the reason I say that is because um, you have better access to uh, the university um, websites and um, resources and things like that on DU student. Link it is pretty much just for internet access for those devices. So what I would recommend is this device up here, this printer, connect that device to link it. And then uh, your laptop down here, leave that on DU student. As long as both devices are registered in this portal, they'll be able to speak on the network on the wireless system. So um, you still be able to print out from your laptop on DU student to your printer that's on Linkit. The unique thing about this system is only you will be able to see that printer. No one else will be able to see that printer. So it's in the background generated your own sort of small network. Um, another thing we can do on managed devices is we can delete the devices. So say you've got rid of your printer, you can click remove there, delete the device, and then it goes out of your database. So I'll just refresh that page. So you can see there it's gone. Okay, as I say, just a quick, roughly how to use this um, Linkit portal and the new system. Um, if you have any further issues or problems, uh, please uh, give the help desk a shout if the FAQs aren't helping you. Um, apart from that, thanks very much.